know, this past duck season, we took a, a young man, his name's Ryan Fisher and his dad, Warren. I've known his dad for a long time, duck hunting with him for a long time. But um, we had a chance to take him out. We had lots of ducks, lots of ducks. We shot a lim our limited ducks, I think four or five man limit, I can't remember. And whether you realize it or not, your life speaks. So in my case, you know, my passion for dogs and for ducks, my Uncle Bill took me to duck hunting. He had a black lab named Spooky. Man, that just, it did something to me. His passion for ducks and for decoys and for how you set it up and for dogs did something to me. It rubbed off on me. It, 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 it strummed something that was already inside of me and it hit a certain note with me. He had a black lab named Spooky and man, I love that dog and I love watching the dog work and all the things he did with it. And he would talk to me about it. And, you know, I did this and I trained her here and I trained this and he would go through into detail, great detail about the dog. And it really caught me, but he was my influence. He was the one that said, hey, you know, you got to do it this way. And he kept doing that. He kept pushing that out there and he kept putting that in there. And it did something to me. He wasn't trying to make it an event. He was, it was who he was and it was what he was about. And it changed my life. So who you are and what you're about, you don't have to make it an event again. Who you are and what you're about changes people's lives. You know, the Bible says that out of your mouth, you can speak life or death. You're changing people's lives whether you realize it or not. You might as well change them for the good. Whenever somebody takes a lesson from me, one of the first things I ask them, I say, okay, what are you trying to do with your golf swing? About 85% of the time, somebody always tells me what their problem is and how they're trying to keep from doing that. That's not, that's not what I ask them. I ask them, what are you trying to do? The other 15% always tell me what their body does. I had a guy one time who was telling me, okay, I'm moving this shoulder so that it touches my chin. I want to keep my weight to the inside of this right foot. I want to keep this knee flex at the same time. Then I want to slide, tilt, turn my hips. I want my right elbow close to my side. I want to stay behind the ball. My chin should be slightly behind the ball. Left arm straight. I want to finish high and at my target. Good grief. I mean, all that thinking about what that did. And how's that working for you? Obviously not very good. Woo! Man, I hit that good. Oop, just about went in the hole. <laughs> Man, it's a fun game when you're hitting it good. Okay, we're all set up, he's ready to go, he's looking out, I got a bird boy out there. I've got my healing stick, he's on the platform. Again, we make everything black and white. I'm gonna put this to remind him he has to keep his rear end on the ground. He has to keep it on this. And this is his area. So I'm gonna signal for the bird, Mark. That's his cue. Watch. Chief. Again, we're sending him on his name because it's a mark. On a, on a mark, we always send him on his name. He's doing good, oh, he's doing real good. He took the right line this time, outstanding, very good. So even though we didn't correct him that time and, and my guy didn't help, he figured out he was not really going the right way, so he, he made the adjustment this time. He went a little fat there, I don't care, That's, that was great. Very good, good. Come on, Chief, it's all right, here, here. They're just horses. Never seen horses, but cows we see, but not a lot of horses. Outstanding, good, good. It felt like I was in a Budweiser commercial. Good, sit. So I set up, I see where I wanna go, I'm aimed there. Now all the troubles vacated out of my mind. My thought is how I wanna move this club, and the result's very good. And what I find a lot of times, you know, we read these uh, sports psychologist books or how to play golf, you know, golf's not a game of prayer, they're all great books and they say, picture the shot. So how much of the time in life, you know, then we sit there and we try to sit here and picture this shot like it's on a TV screen and how it goes up and how it moves. And how... See, that's not what he's talking about. That's not the way your imagination really works. My imagination sees what needs to happen out there, but it's not like a TV screen. And it doesn't take that much concentration. I see the shot. Okay, so I pick the club that does that. Once I've picked that club, I aim at my target. After that, I, I eliminate all the stuff that could go wrong. See, in my imagination, and here's the difference. 
my imagination sometimes will go, oh, there's water over the green. Oh, there's a bunker to the right. Oh, there's out of bounds left. Don't go here, don't go. All that's a negative. That's not a God imagination. A God imagination would be this. There's my target. I've picked a club that'll go there. So I take that club. I set up to the ball. I aim at the target. Now, once I'm set up here, everything else is pushed out. Only the good things are in there. I know where my target is, and I know how I want to move my club. And once I see that, I know where the target is, how I want to move my club, I hit the shot and hit the ball to the target. It's that simple. I'm always thinking in a positive, not a negative. blast today. You know, the Bible says that we have dominion over the birds of the air in Genesis. And I'm a firm believer that God gave us our authority. We should use it on the ducks all we can. How about you? Man, we had great time, great friends, great dog work, good duck calling. Today we're going to set you in a couple of scenarios that shows you how to use this in your dominion. So we got dominion over the birds of the air, but we got to talk to them, brother. We'll talk about the different ways to do that and how we do that. Also, I'm going to show you how that pertains to your life. So you don't want to miss this. Call all your buddies, the guys that duck hunt and the guys that are, I tell you what, call the PETA people that don't even like duck people shooting ducks. Call them, tell them watch. Get your popcorn, your Diet Coke. We're fixing to roll, baby. You don't want to miss this. Well, when we do that, we, everybody uses the club this way. Notice when I do it this way, this end goes one way, this end goes the opposite way. So it kills all your speed. It absolutely just, uh, and it's, it's all gone. And when you do that, you'll hit a lot of shots where you're working the club this way. You'll either hit it way short, <laughs> or way to the right, or sometimes if it's really severe, and you're really gonna crank it, you got a par five, and, or you got a long, long par four, and you're really gonna hit it far, you'll get this action, because you're working the club that way. Look familiar? And that's just trying to, develop club head speed. And really what I try to tell my students is I want club speed. What do you mean by that? The grip, the shaft, the club head are all moving at the same time. If I was going to swing a baseball bat, I would never swing it this way. I would always swing it this way. Why? Because I can hit the ball anywhere on a bat. In golf, we only have one place. And so everybody wants to use this to get there as fast as they can. So if you use club speed, which simply means I'm moving the club backwards and forwards, the whole club, then it sends the ball the way it's supposed to and it maintains its speed as it goes this way. The other thing is, if you're gonna really hit the ball hard or far, then everybody gets tense and the swing gets here and gets a little tight and they just try to kill it. I may have just killed somebody there. But it's just trying to really kill the ball. It doesn't go very straight and it won't go very far. Notice the balance is off because all of my energy is exploding into the golf ball. I don't want any, any, any energy to explode into the golf ball. I want the ball to just get in the way of what I do. Again, I'm just moving the club backwards, forwards. Good night, I need to play today. When we get done today, I'm teeing it up. So when you're out there and you're enjoying what God made and you're enjoying uh, everything, man, thank him. Thank him that you have the chance to be out there. You know my buddy TR, we hunt together all the time. All the time, he said, man, when we're done, Thank God we live where we live, and thank God we can do what we would like to do. Man, isn't that awesome? Instead of griping or complaining, we only shot two ducks today, or some idiot busted in on us today, or this happened or that happened. Man, what a great day. We got to enjoy God's creation. <laughs>
So remember, it's important what you put in you. Just like it's important what I put in this dog and what I feed him. It's important what you put in your life. We're on 129th Street between 81st and 91st. We'd love to have you. God bless you. May the good Lord take a liking to you. Thanks for coming. Hit it, out. camera. <laughs> hey, do, we ever, do you know anything about horses, Pat? I know a little bit about horses. Quite a bit. Why? What do you want to know? What are they doing? Are they going to get us or what? <laughs> Perception was of God. <laughs> <laughs> God <come on. laughs>